The PlayStation 5 is almost here, and for some reason, its new DualSense controller is here already? Since there's nothing to control yet, we'll play the teardown game instead. It's got some serious Stormtrooper vibes going on, and what's that on the grip? The underside of each grip has tiny X's, circles, squares, and triangles printed all over it. That's some cool attention to detail. Let's see if that attention to detail continues on the inside. The minimalist design means there are no visible screws, but you can pry up this black plastic cover around the joysticks. A little spudgering does the trick very nicely. That reveals the first two screws with two more hidden under the L1 and R1 buttons. Maybe don't try this near any open windows. Now we can dispatch the four Phillips screws, take notes Nintendo, no tiny try points here, and open this thing up. Our first look inside reveals a beefy battery, a hint of green circuit board, and some serious trigger and vibration motor hardware. As usual, we'll tackle the battery first. Since it's not glued in place, we can lift the whole thing up to get the cables out of the way, then do some careful tweezing to disconnect it. This gray monolith is a 5.7 watt hour lithium ion battery pack encased in tough plastic. The PS4's DualShock 4 battery pack was also encased in plastic, but it had a much smaller 3.7 watt hour capacity. The well itself is held down by a single Phillips screw. Attached to the battery well is this little rear facing microphone. It's a walk in the park to disconnect during a teardown or if you're just nervous about Sony listening in while you're gaming. Since the vibration motors are soldered to the motherboard, it takes some careful acrobatics to get the board out of the way while we unscrew two more Phillips screws underneath it. Those screws release the white touchpad bracket and a clear light guy that channels some of the controller's lighting from a single LED on the motherboard. Two more screws hold the arms of the plastic frame down. Once they're out, the front plate comes away and we're left with the black frame holding the core components of the controller. The motherboard, the vibration motors, and the new trigger mechanisms. The adaptive trigger modules are secured to the black frame with two Phillips screws each. Four more Phillips screws hold the module itself together. The trigger works normally without all the fancy mechanics, making contact with a button attached to the blue ribbon cable. But if game developers choose to, they can program the controller to adjust how difficult the trigger is to pull. The silver motor spins the white spiral gear, which moves the black arm up and adds resistance to the trigger's lever action, adding another level of feedback and input to the button and to the game. It'll be interesting to see how this part holds up over time. The good news is, most of the components within this mechanism are modular. The main gear and the connecting arm pop right out, and even the motor can be replaced independently if you're handy with a soldering iron. The face of the controller houses the various buttons and the trackpad. The buttons are all very easy to remove, so when they inevitably get stuck, it won't be too hard to pop them out and clean them. The trackpad is secured with two screws on the backside of the face of the controller. Once it's removed, you can see its button, a tiny controller chip, and a group of downward firing LEDs. We are very curious to see what the new vibration motors look like underneath their casings, but that's a little out of the scope of this video. We're diving a little deeper into the mechanics of this controller over in our written teardown. We might unmask it there. You can check that out at the link in the description. Since we're leaving those motors in place for now, our motherboard is held hostage in the frame. It's still easy enough to see all the sights though. The first side is home to all those connectors we dispatched earlier and a few chips. There's a dialog power management IC, a Realtek audio codec, and a custom Sony chip, likely here to handle all the extra processing these controllers are doing. The other side is home to the two joysticks, which look and feel about the same as the DualShock 4 controllers. And also like the DualShock 4, these sticks are soldered to the board, which is unfortunate considering these sticks have been known to drift in the past. The saving grace of Nintendo's Joy-Con drift fiasco was that the drifting joysticks were relatively easy to replace. Alas, no quick joystick swaps here. This side is also home to the USB-C port, an LED, and a small speaker. Our scoring rubric for controllers isn't fully fledged yet, so we're going to hold off on scoring this thing for now. But today we learned that the PS5 DualSense controller is a modular, though pretty complex, piece of tech. It's held together almost entirely with identical Phillips screws, and a lot of its critical components are easily replaceable. But it is unfortunate that some repairs can only be accomplished with a soldering iron. And that's it for this teardown. For more nerdy details on this cool new controller, you can check out our step-by-step -step teardown linked in the description. Stay tuned to ifixit.com and make sure you're subscribed to this channel to catch our teardown marathon next week. We've got Xbox, PlayStation, and iPhone content coming up you won't want to miss.